Iwuwa devs have finally graced us with this banner. I've been asking for this information for so long. Uh, this was actually supposed to go out earlier in the week, but unfortunately we had to wait until a day before the update goes live. And they finally put out the dev notes. We're gonna review them live on stream. I'm actually live waiting for the 5.1 special live stream. So this is gonna go out a couple hours before that goes out. So double upload today, congratulations. But anyways, I'm looking at this banner and there's a lot of things to take into play for this. So we're gonna get into that in just a moment. But before we do that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out more videos on the channel and check out gamer subs using code tystra for 10 percent off y'all we have this fantastic wonderful deal starting later today for pixel cups i'm very excited for the pixel cups drop it's very fantastic look it's got this brand new looking awesome cup right here and it comes with a pressurized led coaster look at this you see it right under here boom that's pretty isn't it look at that Use code Tyson for 10% off on Pixel Cups at gamersubs.gg, right? So let's dive into Shorekeeper, right? Let's talk about these four stars, right? So this is the sadness of this because these four stars do not leave a lot to be desired when it comes to this banner. I'm looking at these. Let's first talk about Chisia, right? So Chisia is a you know damage dealer right if we're looking at uh pride win they classify her as dps right right fantastic so there is a better four star dps in donjon and i've already said this before with donjon that she is the best four star dps right so if you haven't pulled donjon yet then yes use chichia the funny thing is and i actually agree with this tier list on this chisia is better than ling yang so hopefully you haven't pulled a ling ling yang um because if you have that sucks uh use chisia instead but chisia can be fun at times especially with guns i feel that guns need a desperate like overhaul to like give them better damage or something or just a unit to be better overall because if you look we got chisia down at the bottom She's be using guns and all that good stuff. Uh, we got Aalto, and Aalto is hybrid, but still using guns. The only one that's really good as like a off-field DPS when it comes to guns is Mortifi. But even then, I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. But anyways, we're talking about Chisia. Chisia, you get for free. So if you're summoning on the banner for Chisia, you're only going for dupes, right? Because you get her relatively early in the game. I don't think that you should be summoning on this banner for Chisia, right? Especially with part two, as they announced that Gion is going to be the part two banner. So if you need a DPS that badly, you just go for Gion. He's one of the best ones. The only one that the only ones that technically is, be is better is uh, Jeansy, and it's kind of hard to beat her. She's fantastic. So uh, Chisia is going to get a down vote from me, right? <laughs> now let's talk about yang 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 is decent she's got multiple roles that she can kind of uh play here we're gonna go ahead and pull up her information really quick because i do kind of want to talk about her abilities a little bit because yang yang's not bad like she's low on the totem pole but weathering waves is still developing so for me i would definitely say that even though they're low on the tier list it doesn't mean that they're bad right so Chisia, definitely not bad. It's just, there's a lot of DPS in the game. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, resonant skill, Yang Yang wields her sword to create a swirling vortex of uh, winds and gathers all the enemies together, dealing a, uh, arrow damage. So think of it like Venti, but shorter. Um, the duration is not as long. Um, so for me, I look at it and I'm just like, okay, it's kind of whatever, right? Uh, and then her resonance liberation, uh, conjures a mighty cyclone that gathers a nearby enemies dealing uh, arrow damage, right? So To me her main focus is gathering the enemies together so that your DPS could do the work, right? So you get her for free. You don't really need to worry about dupes, but if you do go for dupes This is what they do, right? Big shout out to pride Wind for putting those out there. However to me I look at that and I'm looking at What's the bang for your buck? And if I'm looking at Yang Yang, Yang Yang is not the bang for your buck as the four star. So I'm sorry, Yang Yang gets a down vote. Now, the final character that we're gonna be talking about in the four star pool is Tauki. Now Tauki, 
is unique. As you can see from like from the Pride Run tier list, I'm using this kind of as just a um, kind of footnotes type of thing. She heals, she has multi-roll, and she does shield, right? Let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, on her uh, resonant skill, Taoki deals havoc damage to surrounding targets, generating three rock steady shields and restoring HP to Taoki. If attacked when casting fortified defense, strategic parry will be automatically cast. Rocksteady Shield, when the on-field character is attacked, one Rocksteady Shield is consumed to reduce the damage taken. So she's not entirely, like, she's not shielding you up front, right? You're still taking a little bit of damage. It's a little bit of damage for a shielder, right? Still not bad. It's not bad to have that little bit of shield to uh, mitigate damage. I think it's like a 40% damage mitigation. So that's not bad. That's not bad. And then, of course, you got your uh, Resonance Liberation. Launch an attack based on Tauki's defense on the target, dealing havoc damage. So, she has a lot of roles to play. I look at her as a jack of all trades, master of none. And, like, while she can be great, it's really most people just pay attention to her because she's got giant booba. The amount of comics that I've seen on her is insane. I didn't even ask to see them. I just scrolled through Twitter, right? It's insane. But, um, that being said... If I look at this banner and I look, I need a healer and Tauki can heal and shield, but I need a healer. I'm summoning on this banner for just Shorekeeper. Now, Shorekeeper, I kind of put as a battle healer, right? She deals spectral damage on a lot of different targets, right? And we had to pull up her information here on lootbar.gg. Um, and I was questioning myself for a second because, you know, we got all this stuff. We got our Forte circuit that we were talking about, her normal attacks, resonance skill, all this stuff. And I was kind of going like, well, where does she restore HP? Well, resonance skill restores HP for all nearby party members and summons five dim star butterflies, which automatically track and attack the target, dealing spectral damage. Cool. Not only are you restoring HP, but you're dealing damage as well. Fantastic. Resonance liberation, generate the outer uh, stellar, uh, stellar realm to restore HP to all party members within an effective range continuously. This effect can be triggered once every three seconds. Uh, the inner Stellarum, when the party member uses the intro skill within the outer Stellarum, it evolves in the inner Stellarum. Within the effective range of the inner, for every 0.2% of Shorekeeper's energy regen, all party members gain 0.01 bonus crit rate up to 12.5. That's amazing when it comes to healing and also being able to buff. So your Shorekeeper should be built with a lot of energy regen. So your three star echoes, your two three star echoes need to have energy regen to give her as much as possible. Um, so it's like, get 0.1 for every 0.2, right? So if you have, you're gonna need, what is it? 20 or 25% energy regen to get the 12.5 of the um, crit rate on your characters, right? And that's huge. That is absolutely huge to get that crit rate, right? Uh, su uh, Supernal Stellarum, when a party member uses intro skill within the inner Stellarum, it evolves into the uh, su Supernal Supernal Stellarum within the effective range of the Supernal Stellarum for every 0.1 of Shorekeeper's energy regen. All party members gain a 0.1 increase of crit damage up to 25%. So again, if you have, you're going to need at least 25% energy regen on your Shorekeeper to make sure that you're getting those buffs of the 12.5% crit rate and the 25% crit damage, right? That's insane. Unbelievable. So when you look at this banner, your main goal is going for Shorekeeper. Bar none. Is it worth it? Depends on what you're asking. Uh, depends on how you're looking at it, right? If you need a healer, because right now, as it stands, if we look at this tier list, we have a couple healers, right? We have Marina, right? We have Baiji, who's free. We have... <coughs> Excuse me. And we have Dauki. Dauki... Terrible at healing, in my personal opinion. Baiji, great at healing, but used in other ways, which is pretty dang crazy, unless they unless they already fixed it. Marina, 
good, but you have five other five stars or six other five stars, something like that, four to six other five stars in the general pool that you're eight, that you're fighting for. I think it's there's five in total. So to me, it's not really guaranteed. So it's really dependent. Do you need a healer on your team? If yes, I think it's worth it for Shorekeeper. And I, I even think that it's tough to say that it's not worth it for Shorekeeper because I think she's going to be absolutely broken as a five-star healer. From what it looks like, she's going to be doing some insane stuff. She's going to be doing tricks on it. You're going to have some crit rate and crit damage stuff. And that's just scratching the surface of Shorekeeper. I haven't covered everything. But in my personal opinion, I think Shorekeeper is a must summon for her alone. Your four stars in this are eh. It's whatever. You got two four stars that are free to play. And you have one four star that, if you pull Shorekeeper, is completely useless in my personal opinion. So, that's going to be my take. If you're playing Weathering Waves and you need a really, really good healer, she's going to be great. She's going to be top tier. She's probably going to she's probably gonna bump Farina down a tier because of it. So, I think you should summon for Shorekeeper. Plus, she's hot. Enough said. So, and that's going to be it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out the Pixel Cups drop tomorrow with Gamersubs.gg. And of course, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. We'll be back again with another video very soon. Actually here in probably like a couple hours. So, it was y'all. That's going to be it. Love you to death. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.